Speaker, cell phones on vibration, please. Thank you so much. All non-council employees, Shh, please quiet. take a seat upstairs. Quiet in the chambers. Everyone, please take their seats. Quiet in the chambers, please. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Adams. Present. Amprey Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Borelli. Yeah, yeah. Brannon. Yeah. Cabrera. Here. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Present. Carnegie. Present. Deutsch. Here. Diaz. Aki. Drum. Here. Espinal, Eugene, Gibson. I'm here. Jonai. Present. Grudenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. With permission, I'd like to vote on all land use calls and No, sir. Items. No, not at this point. Okay, sorry. Aye. Here. Thank you. Thank you. King. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lansman, Lander, Levin, Levine, here, Mizell, Menchaca, Presente, Barron, Miller, Moya, present, Perkins, present. Powers, Reynoso. Presente. Richards. Present. Rivera. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Torres. Traeger. Ulrich. Miller, Ballone, here, Van Bramer, here, Williams, Jaeger, here, Matteo, Combo, present, Speaker Johnson, 
Quiet in the chambers, all rise for the invocation. The invocation will be delivered by Reverend Kevin Sweeney of St. Michael's Church of Sunset Park at 352 42nd Street in the Great Borough of Brooklyn. Let us pray. God of love and mercy, God of life and light, we praise you and we give you thanks today and every day for all your blessings and gifts. We thank you especially for our city and our country and for all the women and men, especially our elected officials who serve the common good. We pray for them as we pray for ourselves. Especially we pray for the members of this city council who gather here today. We ask for the gifts of wisdom and courage, compassion and generosity, justice and mercy. In this great city of ours, we especially give you thanks for the gifts and blessings that we share as we strive for unity in the midst of diversity. In this city and community, blessed by the gifts of language, culture, and traditions that have come to us from all corners of the earth and from so many nations and peoples. We ask you to help us to always be mindful of our common humanity and that we may all be instruments of your peace. Tonight and tomorrow we pray in a special way with our sisters and brothers from Mexico as they celebrate the one they call La Virgen, Our Lady of Guadalupe as those who turn to her see in her a sign both of your motherly and fatherly care for all your children. We ask you to continue to bless us all, bless our gatherings, our gathering and deliberations here today, and continue to bless our beautiful city of New York. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Father. And now the motion to spread the invocation upon the record, Councilmember Manchaca. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And Shh, quiet in the chambers, please. Quiet in the chambers. Es un honor. It's a real honor having you here, Father Kevin Sweeney from Sunset Park. Uh, Father Kevin was born in Elmhurst, Queens, of Irish descent. After his extensive education, he was ordained into the Brooklyn Queens Diocese in 1997. In 2010, Father Kevin was named pastor at St. Michael's Church on 4th Avenue in Sunset Park. You know, there's something really special about Father Kevin and what's happening at St. Michael's. It's in the daily commitment to serve the common good, to serve our neighbors, and while other parishes across the country are seeing dramatic drops in attendance, it's at St. Michael's that you see an explosion of believers. Believers who gift what Father Kevin just asked for in his prayer, gifts of wisdom, and courage and compassion and generosity and justice and mercy. You feel that in the many festivals, the immigration and housing support initiatives and town halls that we have at the church and he welcomes organizations to partner with him to serve the parish and anyone who walks in those doors. And you hear it in the homilies that he gives in the Spanish and English himself or tastes and you taste it in the Mexican food that the parishioners cook in the kitchen, in the basement. I welcome you to come with me one day. You'll see it tonight into tomorrow as we celebrate one of the most festive times of the year, as we celebrate La Virgen de Guadalupe, remembering when La Virgen first appeared to the indigenous uh, farmer uh, Juan Diego in Mexico and really launched what is today a beacon of not just hope, but of resistance and justice. La Virgen de Guadalupe. So I thank you, Father Kevin, for being here today uh, and for blessing us. And we welcome you and the spirit of St. Michael's into this chamber, the People's Chamber. Colleagues, uh, I also have to say that Father Kevin invites me and little uh, Brittany Espinosa to talk about PB every year. And we talk to the parishioners. And the reason we win, I think, is because of the blessing that St. Michael, Michael's gives to us to bring that force of nature of community, an immigrant community. Thank you so much, and I move to spread the invocation uh, in full upon the record. So move. Thank, thank you, you Councilmember, and thank you, Father. Thank you. Councilmember Ku, adoption of minutes. <clears throat> Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of October 31st, 2018 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. Excuse me, M118 recommending Sylvia DePietro. 
to the Board of Elections. Rules, privileges, and elections. M119, controller report on debt incurring power. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M120. Uh, roll call. At this time, I'd ask for a roll call vote on all of today's items on the land use calendar. The land use calendar. Quiet in the chambers. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Vote aye. Borelli. Aye. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Aye on all except LU-286 and Resol 660. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Constantinidis. Aye. Cornegy. Deutsch. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. Aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. Aye and all. Kalos. So it's my first time. So with permission, I'd like to vote on all land use call-ups, coupled items on the general order calendar and all resolutions. I vote aye. Thank you. King. Aye and all. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Levine. Aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Councilmember Miller. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Rodriguez. Rose. Aye. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Cornegie. Aye. Miller. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye and all. Van Bramer. Aye and all. Williams. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Combo. Aye. Speaker Johnson. Barron, Councilman Barron. Uh, yes, I vote aye on all with the exception of 257. We're voting on land use uh, call-ups? Yes. Okay, thank you. Oh, they're just putting them together. Okay, thank you, welcome. Today's land use call-ups are adopted by a vote of 44 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Corey Johnson. Good afternoon, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I wanna thank you all for being here with us this Tuesday. We have a busy agenda ahead of us. I wanna start with some very, very sad news, very sad news about uh, one of our own here at the New York City Council. Our incredible community engagement director, Jenny Lowe, was hit by a car on Friday night and seriously, seriously injured. She has a long road of recovery ahead of her, but all of us who know her know that Jenny is a fighter and she is strong enough to make it through this. I visited her in the hospital, the intensive care unit at Bellevue on uh, Sunday afternoon I was relieved to see that even though she is very badly injured, she was still the same Jenny. Jason Goldman and I uh, visited her and it was extraordinarily difficult to see her in that hospital. She, uh, given what happened on Friday night, she is fortunate to be alive and um, I know that the community engagement staff um, are really struggling with what happened 
to um, one of the nicest, most generous, kindest people, not just here at the city council, but people we get to know in New York City. I had the pleasure of seeing her husband and her 16-year-old son in that hospital room on Sunday. They are taking care of her, so they know that she is in good hands. Bellevue is doing an incredible job taking care of her, so I am extremely grateful to the surgeons and doctors and nurses and staff at Bellevue for taking such good care of our Jenny, Jenny Lowe. So I wanna ask you all to please keep Jenny in your thoughts and prayers. We love her tremendously and we uh, can't wait to have her back. Please also keep in your thoughts and prayers the NYPD officer who was hospitalized after a standoff with a suspect on uh, Staten Island on Sunday night. The brave men and women of the NYPD put their lives in the line to keep us safe and we thank them every day for that. I also wanna remember some of those we lost in the weeks since our last dated meeting. Construction worker over Paredes was killed in an on-site accident in Councilmember Cornegie's district in Brooklyn. Mr. Paredes' family, on behalf of the entire city council, we want to extend our deepest condolences. Firefighter Faisal Cotto was killed in a horrible act of violence, a road rage, in a road rage incident while he was off duty in Brooklyn. He was taken from the FDNY in a senseless act of violence. To Mr. Cotto's family, I want to send my condolences and those of the entire city council. He was a brave man who deserved to live a full and happy life. And I am grateful that law enforcement has uh, brought the perpetrator to justice uh, swiftly. Uh, we have also lost, sadly, as I always say, it's like Groundhog Day. Uh, these stated meetings, we've lost several more 9-11 first responders since the last stated meeting due to illnesses they developed during their time at Ground Zero. I will forever be grateful to these individuals for their bravery and service, and I think it's important that we remember them every time one of them sadly loses their lives, and we keep their families in our hearts. Since our last stated meeting, we've lost Captain John Michella, Firefighter Rory M. Mays, Chief Raymond Plaxis, and Trooper Robert Nagel, who were all taken from us in the last few weeks from 9-11 related illnesses. May they rest in peace. Finally, I want to acknowledge the passing of former President George H.W. Bush. President Bush lived a life of service that inspired millions of Americans, even those who disagreed with him, and there is no doubt that he loved our country. Uh, rest in peace uh, to President Bush, and our condolences are with his family. Now I want to ask everyone to please rise and take a moment of silence for all of those that we've lost, and please keep, please keep Jenny Lowe in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. I also think it's important at this stated meeting, as was done earlier on the steps of City Hall, to talk about openly what transpired on Friday in Brooklyn at an HRA center. Jasmine Headley, a 23-year-old African-American woman with her one-year-old baby boy was treated horrifically, violently. I am furious by what I saw in that video, and I feel heartbroken for that mother and baby. It is a short video, two minutes and 26 seconds long, but it shows us so much of what is wrong with our system. How disheartening it is to try and receive benefits for which you're entitled, childcare. That's why she was there, for childcare. How disheartening it is 
to try to receive benefits, as I said, how overflowing those offices are with people who need help, and how one incident can escalate so quickly, not escalate because of anything Ms. Headley did, and set off a chain reaction that sends a young mother to jail and her child taken away from her. In two minutes and 26 seconds, that's what we saw. We saw how our system criminalizes poverty, disproportionately punishes petty behavior, and separates parents from children without considering the lasting damage and trauma that it causes to these parents and children. We saw it, and we are all disturbed by it, and we are not gonna forget about it or stop talking about it. We have an obligation to talk about it, to make our system better, and for fight for changes that will help families like Jasmine Headley's. She should be released from Rikers Island immediately. I'll be meeting with the Department of Social Services Commissioner, Commissioner Banks, and the NYPD Commissioner, James O'Neill, to get to the bottom of this, to understand how this happened, and what we can do to make sure it never happens again. We are compounding this tragedy every single day that Jasmine Headley stays in jail and is on Rikers Island. I want to apologize to her. I want to say I am sorry. I am sorry that you had to go through that. I am sorry that you were on Rikers Island. I am sorry that our systems are set up in this way where you are criminalized for something you should not be criminalized for. I am sorry. And we at the council will do our best to make structural changes that deal with structural racism and that do not criminalize people living in poverty who are just trying to live their lives. I want to recognize that we have students here today from the Urban Assembly School for Emergency Management that are in the balcony. So I want to welcome them with a round of applause. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> now I want to jump into our docket for the day. The council will vote on the following finance items, a pre-considered resolution which I have sponsored that would ratify my authorization to bring legal action on behalf of the city council in the matter of the city council versus the department of city planning. This proceeding concerns the council's challenge to the city planning commission's approval of an alleged minor modification to the two bridges development in council member Margaret Chin's district. Uh, I am proud of Margaret and borough president Gail Brewer for their advocacy and fight on this issue. And we had a very good day in court last week, which I am proud of. And I look forward to us ensuring that this matter goes through a full land use review, a full ULERP at the council. The council will vote on the uh, following property tax exemptions at the following locations. West Farms in Council Member Salamanca's district, 388 Richmond Terrace in Council Member Rose's district, the Turin House in Council Member Rosenthal's district, Lang Sam 15 in Council Member Torres's district, and uh, exemptions for six properties in Manhattan that are being transferred through round 10 of the third party transfer program. The council will also vote on the following land use items. We'll be voting on several applications in Councilmember Landers' district, 338 President Street House, a landmark designation of one of Carroll Garden's largest and most luxurious 19th century houses, Hans S. Christian Memorial Kindergarten, a landmark designation of the first purpose-built free kindergarten in Brooklyn, and commissioned by Elmira E. Christian, and a DOT Brooklyn Fleet Services site selection in Gowanus to serve as a vehicle maintenance and repair facility for the Department of Transportation's Brooklyn Fleet. We'll also vote <clears throat> on an amendment to the Urban Development Action Area Plan, a UDAP, to facilitate the development of a new residential building with 135 units for low-income seniors at Victory Plaza and Councilmember Perkins' district. The council will also vote on the following four tax exemptions. Clinton Urban Renewal Area Site 7 in uh, my council district, 464 and 468 West 51st Street, also in my council district, Joe Central Brooklyn, and this is in council member 11, Cumbo, Cornegie, Amprey Samuel, and Barron's district to preserve 525 units of affordable housing in 79 buildings, 
and 590 Southern Boulevard in Councilmember Ayala's district. The council will vote on a new District 75 Intermediate and High School in Minority Leader Matteo's district with a capacity of 456 seats for District 75 students across all of Staten Island. Uh, and the council will vote on the following pieces of legislation today. Resolution 470, which I sponsored, calls on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would establish the New York Health Act, a program that would provide universal single-payer single health for all New York residents. Thank you very much. Just uh, thank you. Uh, as you all know, I've spoken many times about the fact that I am HIV positive. So this legislation, which would help so many people with serious health conditions, is important to me. The issue of universal health care is personal to me. When I was 22 years old, I was diagnosed HIV positive. Shortly after, I lost my job and my health insurance. It was awful. I would not wish that experience on anyone. I felt fear, anxiety, and deep, deep uncertainty. I was fortunate. I got help. I had a great caseworker, and I, but I will never forget that feeling of losing my health insurance, and I will do everything I can to make sure no one else is ever in that position, which is why I support single-payer health care, and I'm proud to sponsor this bill. It would be a huge change to our system, uh, and if we are being honest, we really need a change in how health care is delivered, and uh, there is no question that a massive overhaul of the health care system is urgently needed. It won't be needed, but it is necessary. Uh, there are tough choices. Uh, that need to be made for the benefit of our city and state. I hope this resolution sends a strong message that the city wants universal health care and we want the state legislature and the governor to sign the New York Health Act. I want to thank our health committee chair, Mark Levine, for his leadership on this issue, for holding a very important hearing on this issue, and for his long-standing advocacy for single payer. Uh, thank you, Chair Levine. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Z. Emanuel Halu, Emily Balkin, and Sarah Liss. The council will vote on Resolution 620, sponsored by Council Member Francisco Moya, which would call on the Federal Communications Commission to reject the proposed rules that would jeopardize the public educational and governmental access television included in the city's, camp, uh, in the city's cable franchises. I want to thank the staff who worked on this, Irene Bohofsky and Patrick Mulvihill. Next, the council will vote on proposed introduction 986A, sponsored by Councilor Peter Koo, which require that the data contained within required reports and studies be transmitted in a format that makes such data easily uh, accessible and machine readable. I want to thank the staff, Irene Bohofsky, Brad Reed, and Patrick Mulvihill, and Sebastian Bakke. The council will also vote on two bills and a resolution sponsored by Councilmember Mark Traeger that will bring oversight to school budgets and the Department of Education's fair student funding formula. Introduction uh, 1014 require the Department of Education to annually submit and post a report on spending allocations, including fair student funding for schools citywide. Introduction 1174 would create a fair student funding task force to review and make recommendations relating to the formula used by the Department of Education to determine school funding. And Resolution, resolution 569 would call on the Department of Education to factor in poverty as a weight in the fair student funding formula for schools beginning at fourth grade or later. I want to remind folks that one of the most significant budget wins that we got this past June was a significant increase in fair student funding monies, which helped increase the amount of fair student funding in schools across the city. Chair Traeger <clears throat> was one of the earliest advocates for that in the preliminary budget process before we got to the executive budget, and I am really grateful that he continues to shine a light on fair student funding and the need for all schools to get up to 100% of fair student funding and to make sure that the formula is the right formula, which is weighting the right item. So I want to congratulate you, Chair Traeger, on these important pieces of legislation and this resolution we're passing today. And I want to thank the staff who worked on this, <coughs> Andrea Vasquez, <coughs> Smita Deshmukh, and Beth Gollum. Finally, the council will vote on a package of legislation that will improve the city's tracking of diversity and employment. Introduction 752, sponsored by Majority Leader Cumbo, would create the Office <clears throat> of Diversity and Inclusion within the Department of Citywide Administrative Services. We also have two bills sponsored by Councilmember Matthew Eugene. Introduction 755 would require the Equal Opportunity Practices Commission to analyze and report annually 
on whether agencies are meeting their racial and ethnic affirmative employment objectives, and when not, identifying the underutilized groups and provide recommendations on corrective action. And introduction 756 would require the Department of Citywide Administrative Services to include in its annual report an analysis of employee response rates to the city's efforts to collect racial demographic information and city employees, and whether changes in the racial and ethnic classification categories have an impact on employee response rates. I want to thank the staff who worked on this package of bills, Richard Cordero, Harbani Ahuja, uh, Balkis Mirig, and Indiana Porta. That is all for our agenda for today's stated meeting. I look forward to proceeding with today's votes, and I want to thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Discussion of general orders? Seeing none. A report of special committees? None. S reports of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, intro 752A, 755A, and 756A, Office of Diversity and Inclusion and Review of Racial Classification Categories. Amended and coupled in general orders? Report of the Committee on Education, intro 1014B and 1174A, Fair Student Funding. Amended and coupled in general orders? Report of the Committee on Finance, preconsidered Reso 651, Council Challenge to City Planning. Coupled in general orders? Preconsidered Reso 652, Organization Funding. Coupled in general orders? Preconsidered LU 282 and Reso 656 through preconsidered LU 285 and Reso 659, Tax Exemptions. Coupled in general orders? Preconsidered LU 286 and Reso 660, Third Party Transfer Program. Cu coupled in general orders? Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 238 and Reso 661 through LU 239 and Reso 660. Landmark designations. Coupled in general orders. LU 256, DOT Fleet Services. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the <coughs> Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. Uh, excuse me, LU 257 and Reso 663 through LU 266 and Reso 666, property tax exemptions. Coupled in general orders. LU 267 and Reso 667 and LU 268 and Reso 668, sidewalk cafes. Coupled in general orders. LU 278 and Reso 669, school facility, Staten Island. Coupled in general orders. LU 279 and Reso 670, Victory Plaza. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Technology, Intro 986A, Data and Agency Reports. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, Intro 720, Site Safety Training. Laid over. LU 256 and Reso 671, DOT Fleet Services. Couple of general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Couple of general orders at this time, I'm asking for a roll call vote on all of the items on today's general order calendar. Adams. Aye on all. Ampri Samuel. Aye on all. Ayala. Aye. Barron. Aye, with the exception of 257. I'm abstaining on that one. For the usual reasons, I think we need to have larger concentrations for people at the lower end who need housing the most. Thank you. Thank you. Borelli. I and all except uh, intro 752, 755, 756, and land use 239. Also, for the usual reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Brennan. I on all for the usual reasons. <laughs> Cabrera. I and all, I say preconsider LU 286 and Reso 660. Chin. Aye on all. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye on all. Carnegie. Aye on all except LU 286 and Reso 660. Deutsch. All from I. Diaz. Permission to split my vote? Yes. Thank you, Madame. Chairwoman, I, I'm, I'm just taking this time to congratulate the speaker, and I tell you why. When we saw the federal agent taking away the children uh, from their mother's hands in the in the frontier, uh, there was a crowd. There was people criticizing that because because uh, law enforcement agent was brutalizing children. Uh, and the speaker took that time, the speaker took the, the leadership to go to stand up against that. And today, 
Again, the speaker took the leadership to stand against a uh, member of the NYPD brutalizing a, a child, taking away from the from the. If it was wrong for the law enforcement agent in the in, in the frontier to do that to children, it should be wrong also for any law enforcement agent anywhere, any department. So I congratulate the speaker for taking the leadership on that. Is that that is called. Uh, not having double standard. I hate double standard. Mr. Speaker, I congratulate you because you was you stood up for the children and the uh, the, the immigrant children and, the, and you stood up today for the children here in, in the state. So thank you very much and I vote yes on. Mm -hmm. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Aburai. Gibson. Aburai, you know. Jonai. Jonai. I know. Thank you. Gordanchik. Uh, I and all, and special thanks to uh, Chair Traeger for continuing to put the FAIR in FAIR student funding. Thank you. Holden. I and all except intro 752, 755, and 756. Vote no. King. Congratulations to Chair Traeger, and I'm looking forward to the funding that's supposed to get to our education system, actually gets to our education system to improve the lives of all our young people. And with that all being said, I vote I and all. Matteo. I'm um, voting no on 752, 755, 756, LU 239, and a companion Reso 662, and I and the rest. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Lansman. Aye. Lander. Permission to explain? Yes. Vote aye on all, and I just want to thank my colleagues for supporting the landmarking of 236 and 238 President Street and Carroll Gardens, two really lovely buildings that residents of that block have worked hard over the years to preserve, uh, and I want to thank you for helping to do so. Um, and I also want to thank both the Speaker and Councilmember Levin for their leadership uh, in demanding justice for Jasmine. It's really something that's painful to see, and I appreciate your stepping up to make sure we get accountability. Vote aye on all. Levin. Levine. I on all. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. I on all. Miller. Sorry. I on all with the exception of 286, 660. I'll be abstaining. Moya. I on all. Perkins. I on all. Powers. I on all. Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Yes. I just want to take the time to thank the Progressive Caucus as well for helping organize uh, today's press conference and the great work that um, uh, the speaker has done to highlight this important issue. I'd also like to thank the council members that took the, the time today to meet with students fighting for equity in sports. Uh, after today and their lobbying efforts, we got to 26 signatures. So I want to thank them for that great work. Uh, and I vote I on all. Thank you. Thank you. Richards. Uh, permission to explain my vote as well? Yes. I uh, just want to add my uh, comments. And I think uh, Councilmember Reynoso certainly said it as well. We want to thank the speaker uh, for his leadership on this issue, uh, Councilmember Levin as well. Uh, and also just want to add that there's no amount of training that could train individuals to carry themselves in a dignified fashion and not yank uh, children from their mothers. Um, I also want to add that I hope this council and many of my colleagues, no matter where we're at, when we have this conversation around 50A and the disciplinary process uh, within the NYPD, that this council will also be a strong voice uh, in that conversation. Until we reform that convoluted debate, 
uh, we will continue to be back here. And for every uh, situation like that, it, that is occurring across the city, let's be clear, not everything is caught on camera. Um, it is my hope that we really push for real reform, especially with our state Senate, uh, now moving to uh, the, the line to Democrats, that we really take this issue up and be a strong voice here. And that's the way we can partly start to ensure that this never happens again. Uh, so I want to thank you. And I, you know, our state attorney general will have a lot to say about that in a few months. And with that, I, I say aye. Thank you. Rivera. I vote aye on all except for land use 279, Reso 670. I'm abstaining. My husband is the director of operations at Canberra Properties. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. I vote aye on all, and I want to um, honor the uh, women who spoke out today uh, for justice for Jasmine, who spoke from their hearts. Uh, Majority Leader Lori Combo, Council Member Alika Amory Samuels, in whose district uh, Jasmine lives. Council Member Adams, Council Member Rivera, Council Member Rose, Council Member Barron, Council Member Ayala, Gibson, and Chin. You spoke from your hearts today, and that's what's going to make a difference in Jasmine's life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you, uh, public advocate. First of all, I want to uh, thank this entire body, the entire council, for being so supportive on the push for fair student funding. I want to thank the speaker for bringing us up to Albany. I'll never forget confronting the governor and not taking any answer except for yes for support for our schools as an answer, uh, and going to Gracie Mansion and negotiating a budget, um, demanding, insisting on more money for our schools. That victory, Mr. Speaker, is in large part to your leadership and your persistence. Also want to thank uh, Finance Chair Denny Drum, who has been at the forefront with me from day one, I want to thank you so much, Chairman Drum, for all your support and leadership in education and in our, in our budget. Um, my colleagues, today we, we are voting on a critical fair student funding package. FSF is a vital, critical, and the most flexible source of funding that could be used at a school's discretion uh, to hire art teachers, music teachers, uh, to expand, uh, to hire social workers, guidance counselors, the, the folks that our, our, our students need. We need to do everything possible to make sure that there's true equity in our schools. Uh, introduction 1014B would require the DOE to report annually an all school budget allocation. So every member will get to see all their school budgets and what their FSF allocation is. The majority of public schools in New York City are not receiving 100% of their entitlement. You deserve to know what your schools are receiving and what they're not receiving. That is an issue of transparency and fairness in, in, in our school system. Uh, and also introduction 1174A will create a task force to review and make recommendations uh, uh, to uh, tweak the formula, because right now, poverty, for example, is only accounted for up to the third grade. It's mm -hmm. as if poverty doesn't exist beyond the third grade. There's so many other weights and issues that we have to address. The task force will be made up of parents, uh, of, of, of children in the, in the school system, educators, advocates who specialize in working with vulnerable student populations. We need to make sure we hear from all communities how this uh, formula sh should best be suited to support our kids. The current formula is created under the Bloomberg administration which should tell you something. So I, I vote aye on all. Thank you very much for, for your time. Thank you. Ulrich. I ask for unanimous consent to vote on the land use items. Yes, council member. Thank you. I vote aye on the land use, and I vote aye on all on the general order calendar. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> Valone. Thank you. Van Bramer. No. Jaeger. I vote aye on all, with the exception of LU-239 and accompanying resolution 662. Uh, and uh, introduction 752, 755, 756, on which I vote no. Combo. I vote aye, and I also want to thank all of my colleagues for gathering together today because it's important that we speak out um, on issues as a black woman in the city of New York. I recognize today just how vulnerable unprotected we are as people 
in New York State. And we've watched so many of these videos time and time again, and with each one of them, there was a, what was in their hands? Did they have a gun? Did they have a pipe? Did they have cigarettes? But in this case, the woman had a baby. And if we can't come to the rationalization that a woman with a baby, we're not talking about any of these other cases that we've seen, the most vulnerable, then we have really failed as a city at the highest level if there are no repercussions brought against those who committed this heinous crime against a black woman and her black child who will never be the same after this horrific incident. This has to be taken seriously. This is not a one-day protest. This is something that our city has to engage in in a very deep way. And I say to all, I say to everyone involved to imagine if your wife, your daughter, your mother were attacked in this way. So I thank all of my colleagues for being here. This is a longer journey, and this is a journey that, as elected leaders, that we have to take together. We have to leave this city better than we found it, and we have to leave the most vulnerable to be the most protected moving forward. So I, I vote aye on all of these bills, and I, and I continue to work with my colleagues to bring justice for Jasmine, but to so many thousands of other people, mothers, that are attacked in this way that never make it to a video camera. So thank you all for your support. Thank you. <clears throat> Speaker Johnson. Uh, uh, Clerk, I think we have uh, Council Member Levin as well. He didn't vote. Council Member Levin. Uh, I vote aye on all, and uh, briefly just want to thank the speaker, as well as all of my colleagues for being out uh, there today, earlier, uh, for Justice for Jasmine, and uh, doing everything we can to uh, take a cold look at the system uh, that led to this, and making sure that we're doing the needed reforms, um, uh, both at the police department and at HRA. Um, and I want to thank, in particular, Majority Leader Cumbo, Council Members Amphrey Samuel, Adams, Rosenthal, Chin, Gibson, Rivera, Rose, you, Public Advocate James, uh, Council Member Barron, and Council Member Ayala, uh, in particular, for being there and for your uh, very stirring and strong words. Um, thank you. Thank Final. you. Thank you. All items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 752A, <clears throat> which is adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions, and intro 755A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions, um, and intro 756A, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions, and land use 239 in resolution 662, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, three negative, and zero abstentions, and land use 257 in resolution 663, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention, and pre-considered land use 286 in resolution 660, which was adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, two negative, and one abstentions, and LU 279 in resolution 670, which was adopted by a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative and one abstentions and the revised land use call-up vote is 49 in the affirmative zero in the negative introduction and reading of bills all bills have been referred to the committee as indicated on today's agenda and today's discussion of resolution 470 which reads as follows or all of the resolutions which we reads as follows. Resolution 470, a resolution calling on the state legislature to pass and the governor to sign A4738A and S4840A, legislation that would establish the New York Health Program, a single payer health plan for all New York State residents. All of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. Resolution 569A. Okay. <laughs> resolution 569A, an amended resolution calling upon the New York City Department of Education to factor in poverty as a weight in the fair student funding formula for schools beginning at fourth grade or later. Um, all of those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstention? The ayes have it. 
uh, Resolution 620, a resolution calling on um, the Federal Communications Commission to reject the proposed rules put forth in the second further notice of proposed rulemaking 18-131 and to create provisions that would strengthen public educational and governmental access television. All of those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. And now on to general discussion, beginning with Council Member Rivera. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I want to ask my colleagues for support uh, to support a, a new bill that I'm introducing today that deals with an issue all New Yorkers struggle with. That's noise. Not the good kind of noise, not the good trouble that we make, but the noise that disturbs our sleep and affects, adversely affects our quality of life. So intro 1292 would require owners of multiple dwellings to distribute a notice to new and renewing tenants about their obligations under the city's noise control laws. So some landlords already do this, but with this bill, landlords who fail to do so will be penalized $250. As someone who unfortunately has to deal with things like SantaCon in Excuse my Excuse me, Council Member, can we have quiet in the chambers? We are still in session. Council Member Rivera has the floor. Thank you. As someone who has to deal with a lot of noise complaints, in fact, uh, my home community board was number one for many, many weeks, and who has really entertaining events going through our district like SantaCon. Uh, this is the perfect time for us to take a look at noise issues and the lack of knowledge and enforcement of the city's rules. And this is not just a Lower Manhattan issue. Councilmember Rodriguez, who I want to thank for co-sponsoring with me, this bill is tirelessly fighting to mitigate noise in his district, which has the highest number of complaints in the city. And again, this is not just for Manhattan people. This is all over for all of us who are trying to strike a balance between commerce and community, between entertainment and, of course, quality of life. I want to reiterate this is just one step that our office plans to do more legislatively working with city agencies to ensure that enforcement is completed and that tenants are empowered to report noise and see it stopped. So I just want to thank all the leaders in my, uh, in my community, in my neighborhood, who have fought hard just to get a good night's sleep, including specifically Dale Goodson, who's on Community Board 3, and who is a leader on his block association. So I'm asking all my colleagues to please sign on. We like to have a good time, but we also deserve a good night's sleep. Thanks, Thank everyone. You. And now for a vote, Council Member Jamani Williams. Thank you, I on all, with the exception of LU 257, which I abstain. Thank you. Continuing with general discussion, um, Council Member Rose. Thank you. Roughly three million Americans <clears throat> identify as members of the many Native American tribes in this country. Sadly, our nation has a checkered past regarding the treatment of the original inhabitants of this land. And as a direct result, unemployment and poverty rates among Native Americans are much higher than those of the general population. Our city has a program to help remedy past disparities in economic opportunities in the form of outreach and resources to minority and women-owned business enterprises, or MWBEs. It came to my attention via a constituent who is here with us today that Native Americans is not a category that can currently claim MWBE status. Today I am introducing Intro 1293, which will add Native Americans to this list if business owner categories who can register as an MWBE in New York City. This bill will also raise our targets for the amount of city contracting dollars that flow to businesses owned by these historically underrepresented groups. I want to thank Mayor de Blasio and, and SBS Commissioner Greg Bishop for recognizing this omission and proposing solutions. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson, who is not ever too big to apologize for an injustice, for his support for this important and much needed legislation. Staten Island resident and entrepreneur Jacqueline Tacarante, who is here today in the balcony with us for her advocacy on this issue. My co-sponsors, CM Cornegie and Daniel Collins, for his work on bringing this legislation to life. And I look forward to all of my colleagues signing on to this important legislation. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member King. Thank you, Madam Public. It, I rise today with a heavy heart um, due to what our sister experienced Friday. I say to Lori Combo, a mother of a young son, I say to all the parents of young children, 
This is nothing new in America. And I'm asking us as elected officials to step up our game. Today, we went out on the steps. I thank Councilman Malevin and Speaker Johnson for leading the conversation. But we have to do more for our policy. Two years ago, we as a council passed a piece of legislation calling out the three-fifth clause in the United States Constitution. We heard today in the conversation that this is the root systemic, systemic root of this country, of bigotry, prejudice, and it reminded people of slavery when you saw a young black boy, a child being ripped from his mother. These things happened 300, 400 years ago, and it's still happening today in America. We are still getting lynched in America. And if we want to do something about it, we got to take a hard stand as elected officials, people of color coming together, for my Caucasian brothers and sisters standing with us. It may be hard and challenging in your time and era, but I can tell you today with a heavy heart, not one of you would change places with me to be a black man in America with what we go through. I'm just having a real conversation in because my heart is heavy what happened to that sister. There's no reason we should be still dealing with this crap in America today. So if we're really going to change something, let's call on the federal government to amend that Constitution, saying that all Americans are equal, saying all blacks are equal, because that's, that same piece of legislation still allows slavery to be in the United States of America. It's just called incarceration. So if we're going to have a real conversation, talking about real policy, then let's do something about it. Let's not fake it, because it sounds politically expedient at the time. And then when the cameras go away, we go back to the same bigotry and prejudice that's in our neighborhoods. If we're going to be true leaders, then have the real conversation with the biggest that are in your neighborhood. Have the true conversation with the person who's, who's prejudiced. Have the true conversation within yourself to know whether you can stand up and take a real fight and not worry about getting a political hit. Doing a human thing to save lives. If we're going to be real, the, the generation of New Yorkers and the councils that's going to lead, let's do it. Let's not fake it till we make it. Let's do it for real. So with that all being said, I want to share those words, and I'm going to be praying that someone gets fired, someone gets fired, someone gets fired, and we free our sister today. Thank you. Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I first want to say I'm very pleased that we've passed a resolution that supports the legislation calling for single-payer health care. I think that that's critical, and I think we need to do all that we can to move that forward. Secondly, I want to thank all of those who organize today's press event on the steps of City Hall. What we saw on the video was startling, but it's just another incident that has happened that this one was recorded. It goes back to recordings that we have seen over the years, going back to, I guess, the most uh, public one was Rodney King when we saw him being beaten. The issue becomes, and I have to associate myself well, with my colleague Donovan Richards, who at the press conference said, until there are adequate, appropriate consequences, and I've said it before, for the people who violate the law, the people who commit criminal acts, until they are appropriately punished, we're going to continue to have these kinds of events happen. The racism that exists in this country is systemic, which is why we continue to see black, brown, and poor people criminalized when they are the victims. I couldn't believe what I was seeing, you know, again, so blatant. The way that this baby was yanked from his mom's arms. But until we say to HRA, and until we say to NYPD, these are the people who are going to be fired. These are people who perhaps need to go to get a demotion or whatever it is that appropriate consequences are. We're going to continue to see that. And consequences, in my opinion, for NYPD has to go beyond a loss of vacation days because that's the only thing that has happened even when they have killed us. Uh, even when they have brutalized us and it's been recorded. So we've got to move beyond just what we have here and get consequences implemented, especially with NYPD, but with any agency that brutalizes us. Thank you. Council Member Chin. Thank you. First, I wanted to thank all my colleague and thank you to Speaker Corey Johnson uh, for standing with me and the borough president and the resident of Two Bridges. Through this legal action, 
We are fighting to defend affordability in this vibrant waterfront neighborhood. We are also ending a loophole. What is a minor modification that has sadly given more weight to an arbitrary land use determination over thousands of residents who are left voiceless in a process that could decide the future of the neighborhood? The Two Bridges neighborhood is already underserved by transit, affordable supermarket, and open space. The environmental impact statement accompanying these applications do not even begin to account for primary and secondary displacement that will ripple through the entire neighborhood. I'm also deeply concerned about one application that is going to attach itself to a senior building and eliminating a whole line of apartment so they can build on top of it. This fight is about equity, is about fairness, and is about turning the tide of luxury over development that has displaced innocent tenants and destroyed community. From the beginning, I have made my stand clear to the administration. Four towers that are more than 60, to 60 story high, creating thousands of luxury units in an area the size of a city block. They do not belong in this low to mid-rise neighborhood, especially not without a full public review process. And that's why I'm really so appreciative uh, of our land use team and of the general counsel's office and our speaker for standing with us and with the resident of Two Bridges to fight back so their voices will be heard and they get the protection they deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Levin. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say very briefly um, regarding uh, the situation with uh, Jasmine Headley at the HRA office um, that in addition to um, examining what happened uh, in this particular instance where um, every step of the way uh, leading up to what we all saw uh, in this terrible video and the terrible circumstances in the, in the, in the absolutely awful way that Jasmine and her child were treated, every step of the way uh, in the process, a, de a bad decision was made. A, decision, a bad decision uh, uh, from an HRA uh, case manager perspective, uh, a bad decision from security personnel in the HRA office um, and how they were interacting with her as a client and as a person, as a human being, as a mother, uh, a bad decision that was made to call 911 a bad decision made by police department when they came in um, to immediately try to arrest her and not sit down and talk to her like a normal person and like a person that is deserving of respect. And, uh, and so we need to examine every single one of those bad decisions that was made and make sure that that never happens again. We also have to examine what's happening at our HRA centers, make sure that we are getting clear data on uh, the wait times at HRA offices, the role of peace officers, um, uh, as, as they interact with uh, clients, um, the accommodations for people with small children. Um, if somebody is waiting there for two, three, four, five hours, what accommodations are we doing for, 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 uh, for women with one or two or three or four children and how we are accommodating that? Um, so uh, I, this needs to be looked at from a bigger picture and, um, and I think that this council stands uh, able to do that uh, in the coming months to make sure that, uh, that we are uh, allowing people that are receiving benefits that they are entitled to, that they are entitled to, um, uh, that, uh, that we are treating them with just a basic level of decency and like human beings um, uh, and, uh, and, and those that are deserving of respect from our city government. So I want to thank our speaker uh, for his, his really uh, incredible um, uh, moral leadership here and attention to this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I share your sentiments, and the hearing for Jasmine has just begun. Um, all items on today's general order calendar are adopted by a vote of 50 in the affirmative, zero negative, and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 752A, 755A, and 756A, uh, which was adopted by a revised vote of 46 in the affirmative, four negative, and zero abstentions. 
um, NLU 239 and Resolution 662, which was adopted by a revised vote of 47 in the affirmative, three negative, zero abstentions, and um, LU 257 and Resolution 663, which was adopted by a revised vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero negative, and two abstentions, pre-considered LU 286 and Resolution 660, um, which was adopted by a revised vote of 48 in the affirmative, two negative, one abstention, and LU 279 and Resolution 670, which was adopted by a revised vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero negative, and one abstention, and the revised land use call-up vote is 50 in the affirmative, zero negative. Um, Jenny Lowe, we uh, wish you uh, well wishes and we hope that you get better soon. Um, I now turn it over to the speaker to close. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Today's stated meeting <clears throat> of January 11th, 2018 is hereby adjourned.